Welcome back. Several days ago, I played the adjustable rating Komodo bot on chess.com. I started at the lowest level a few months ago at my son's suggestion, and I've beaten every level up until level 11, which is rated 1500. And in the video a few days ago, I ended up in a stalemate due entirely to my own fault. I was actually ahead near the end. All right. Will they take that one? Because they can't take that one safely. Okay. What? <laughs> oh my goodness. And I'm in the middle of editing that video right now. I'm a few videos behind, so that was several days ago by the time you see this. But while I was editing and realized, you know, I was ahead for a big chunk of that game, I'm going to try it again. I'm going to do my best as I did last time. And sometimes my best isn't good enough. If you're new here, I'm not a titled player or chess coach. I'm not even really good at chess. And that's one of the reasons for this channel's existence is for me to get better at chess and to document me doing so. I'm going to try again. If if I lose, you know, hopefully we'll learn something and, and hopefully I'll do okay. I've set it to level 11, which is rated 1500. I'm going to let the computer choose the colors and click play. The bot is playing the English against me. Did I play the symmetrical variation? Because I think that's the most irritating when people play it against me, but I don't know if that's actually good. The other one that's really irritating is when they play this uh, Anglo-Dutch defense, but that's when I'm playing with the white pieces. I really don't know what to do with the black pieces. I'm going to play the symmetrical variation. I assume the bot's going to play knight to c3. No, it didn't. It played knight to f3. Okay, well, I was going to play this knight here. I assume that's good. Let's do it. Can we be completely symmetrical? Is that a good idea? Or should I play e5 now? I think I can play e5 now since it's going to be defended by this knight and they can't, like, you know, pin this knight or anything. Let's go ahead and, and put that e-pawn up there and see what happens. Okay, I assume that's aiming for this push here. Should I defend that? Which lets out my light squared bishop. Should I put a knight here? When that pawn comes, let's say I get this knight out. When the d-pawn comes, I'm going to take with my c-pawn. I assume they'll take back with their e-pawn and then I'll take back and then they'll take, and then I'll take, and then they'll take, and they'll have a queen here, and I won't have any pawns left in the middle. Well, they won't either, though. They'll they'll just have this c-pawn. Oh, no, I'll have a d-pawn back here. I don't know. That, that looks like it might get pretty crazy. Let's go ahead and play this. Maybe when they play that, I'll push past. I don't know. Should I push past, or should I take with one of these pawns? I think if I push past threatening that knight, they can push past threatening this knight, and I don't know which one's worse. So I'm going to take it. We'll just do what the thing that I said we would do, which is just take a bunch of pawns. And if they take, then I'm going to take. And they're going to have their queen up there. And we're even. I should get this knight out and then castle, I think. Let's go ahead and do that. Wait, am I recording? For a second, I forgot whether or not I clicked the record button. But I guess I did. Okay, they're, they're going to play this, maybe. All right, I'm going to castle, I think. I think that's okay. They're going to hop the knight in here. Should I just take it? That gives them a, an advanced d-pawn, but then it would be bumped up against... My, actually, they might take with the queen, but they might take with the pawn. I don't know. I don't have to take. I could, you know, just let them take me and take back. I could play this pawn up to get the light squared bishop out, but I don't know where it's going to go. I think if they take here and I take back, then their queen's in danger and they'd have to move it. However, what if they take the bishop? Then I have to take with the queen... They, they might be looking to take the bishop rather than rather than the knight. But you know what? Maybe this is a good time to play rook to e8. So when that bishop moves or gets taken, uh, my rook will be lined up with their king. Let's try that. And I assume they'll take here. And when I take back, oh, oh, they moved their king. Okay. I knew that was about to get fun one way or another because I was going to have a bishop here while they were in check if they took the knight then. But they didn't. Okay. Let's see. What else can I do here? I could just move the bishop. But where? That's not a good place. I could push this pawn once, and then that would be a good place for the bishop eventually. But I am assuming they're going to take the bishop on the next turn. I'm going to try that. I, like I said, I assume they're going to take here. They didn't. Okay. Well, then let's put this bishop here, aimed at their queen, and see where it goes. They checked me. Let's see. They're up by. They're up three points. If I just move out of check, they can get my rook, and they'll be up eight points of material, and I'll get their queen. But if I move out of check, and they just move their queen then they're still at three points of material. So that seems not like the best plan. And I can't take their queen now because I'm in check. So I guess I have to take the knight and we're going to double the pawns. That's not how I wanted this to go, but that's how it's going to go, looks like. All right. Let's put this bishop up here and see what they want to do. I don't think they can save that rook. Oh, wait, am I winning again? Oh, I want to be really careful because last time I was winning and then I gave it up to a stalemate. That's aimed at this undefended pawn, which I can defend just by moving it forward. 
but then they could come to this square anyway, and then I will pin their bishop, so that's not great. Actually, I can just leave the pawn there, right? If they take it, I'm going to uh, be checking their king, which I can do now anyway. Let's go ahead and check their king first, and I can check again, but then they can just come toward my rook, I guess. Let's see. So it's probably not worth it to check just now, but I am up a whole rook, and so far this is going more quickly than the last one. I don't know where exactly the bot made its mistake, but usually it's earlier than I thought it was. I just know that after we did the queen trade, I had their rook trapped over there. So I don't know if they should have moved it first. They didn't. Or, or if they set up the whole queen and knight thing incorrectly. I'm not sure. Let's go back to this check. It's not my only check. I, I can check with the bishop again. But let's say I check with the rook on e2. They have one, two, three, four choices to get out of check. Five. So it's not really forcing in the sense that it forces them to go a certain direction. They have lots of ideas here. Of course, I would love it if they went to d1, because then I could go over here and they would be in check from the bishop and I would win their bishop, but they're probably not going to go over there to, to d1. They're probably, I assume, going to come closer to the rook. I don't think they would go back in there, because then I would have this discovery, uh, you know, in just a second. Okay, so let's say they come to one of these squares. I'm not sure. Actually, that might be good, because what I want to avoid right now is getting this bishop down here to h6. I think I think I want to strongly avoid that, getting my king trapped in here. I think right now if I play this and lock that bishop in place, which keeps this bishop from coming down... Oh, but then they would just push that pawn. Hmm. Really not sure what to do. But you know what? I would like to get my rook down there, so let's do that. It's safe right now. They did come toward it, kind of like I thought they would. But the king is trapped here. And my bishop's cutting off those. My rook's cutting off all of these. It's too bad I can't safely check them right now. Let's see. What if I brought this bishop here, which would guard this check? Oh, but then they could go that way. Oh, what's the best way to do this? Let's bring the other rook. Line it up with that rook so that I can move the bishop when I need to. Oh, they, they went around that way. That was probably pretty good, I think. And I can't use this check because then that rook would be undefended. But I can move the rook... And then that bishop has to go someplace, and the other rook is keeping their king from coming any closer. Let's try that. Where's the bishop going to go? Is it going to go there? No. Oh, I get the bishop now, too. I'll, I will take the bishop. I'm feeling pretty good about this so far. I mean, despite little attacks like this, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good so far. I can't just take that, I don't think. They would take back. I don't think that's good for me. So I'm going to try to save the bishop by going down here and working on some of these pawns. Let's try that. This is just going to be a little trade here, I think. I think we're okay with that. Oh, they they're, ooh, uh, they are aiming here at this undefended pawn, but the rook is there. Let's take the rook first. I assume they'll take back. I'll check with this pawn, and then we'll be well on our way, I think. Because in just a second, they're going to be out of pieces. All they've got left is that bishop. Let's get rid of that pawn. I'm going to get rid of this pawn. They can take that one like we said, and they did, and that protects this one, but not this one. So let's take this one, see what they're going to do. I'm going to take their bishop now. Okay, we're good. Very nice. I want to trap their king on those two files over there, like so. They're trapped on those two files. What I have to be careful of, though, is to not stalemate here like I did with the last, the last time I played this bot. Right now they have several places they can move here, and that rook is safe. I'm going to go get this pawn, just so it doesn't cause me any trouble. Oh yeah, they can go even further than I thought. I'm going to leave that rook there, and they're going to have plenty of running room. But I don't want that pawn to be a bother, and then I'm going to start bringing the king. Or should I just go get a queen? I think that will be easiest at this point. Let's just go get the queen and finish this off. Yeah, they, they have lots of running room over there. I'm not worried about a stalemate right now. Now, they might try to trap themselves, you know, up here with a pawn, but they're still going to be able to go around it because I gave them two ranks. So even if they got this pawn up here and blocked their king in, they can still get their king out. So yeah, I'm not worried about a stalemate right now. I'm going to go get this queen. If I get a queen right now, they still have multiple legal moves. So let's do that. And then we will check them with the queen. I was going to check them here, but they got off of that file. But let's go ahead and check them, because checks are great. If I check them here, they can slide in behind that pawn, and then we might be getting close to a stalemate. So we want to be careful here. Don't want a stalemate. I'm going to keep checking, so they cannot possibly stalemate while they're being checked. And now we're just going to walk them down. 
and get made on the back rank. I feel a lot better about this game than the previous one, but I also don't know, maybe the bot played worse. I am going to click save game. I do have a game review or should have a game review free for today. I'm going to look at the chart is the reason that I'm running the game review, the little graph that populates there. Okay, this looks a lot better than the last time we played. And you can't see it behind my camera view here. But if I move my camera view, you can see that I played like a 1950. The bot only played like a thousand, but I believe that's what it played like in the previous attempt against this bot. So I did much better here. There, I'm back. I knew you would miss my beautiful face if I, you know, had it hidden for too long. But yeah, I definitely did better in this game. It looks like I gave the bot a little bit of an advantage early, but then it gave it away early and never fully got it back, although we came close. So that's the important part right there. I'm going to click to that and switch to the analysis board here. Looks like there was a series of misses on my part, and then the bot's final blunder was F4. Okay, and this is what I was wondering about when I said I didn't know when the bot had gave, given it away. It looks like it tried to give it away right here. It was the setting up of the queen and the knight. Sorry, not there. D5. The knight came into D5, and that was a mistake, but I didn't correctly take advantage of that. Its best move, of course, was was a bishop to g2 here, which I assume was in preparation for castling. Yeah, a couple of moves later, they would have castled. But it does say if they if they put the bishop there, I would have played here, which I don't think I would have because they have one, two, three, four pieces defending that square. And I would only have two pieces. My queen and my knight would be the only two pieces defending my d5 pawn. So I probably wouldn't have played that. So it wouldn't have gone that way. If they had played this, they would have been ahead plus one here. But because they played that, I have an advantage, but only if I just take it now. At yeah, first it was minus one, but then it dropped. After Stockfish thought about it for a little while, I wonder if I let it run even further, if it would get even more even. But yeah, that's that's within plus one and minus one, and I should have just taken it. But Rook to E8 was my second best move, counted as a miss, but I don't think it should have been. At best, it should have been an inaccuracy. And they should have taken here immediately, and I would have taken with Jack. But they moved their king, which puts me at minus two. Again, if I'll take their knight with my knight. Well, I had no way of knowing that was a good move. So that was a miss again. This time it definitely should have been counted as at least a mistake, if not a miss or a blunder. And here it's because of this. They can line up with the rook right now. It's as if they had played that I would have played here. Well, probably. But instead they played f3, which was a miss on their part. I should have put my bishop on b7 now or taken the knight now. But this was a miss and puts us back. Okay, I'm not sure why. All those three turns that it said, or four turns that it said I should have taken the knight, I, I'm not sure why that's better. I think I understand this, because after they take here and I take back and they run away with their queen, then I would get this pawn with check and, and take their rook. This I do understand. I, I'm still not sure about all those times it said I should have taken the knight. I don't know why. So I should have played bishop to b7 here, but I played that instead. We're back to between plus one and minus one, and this time it definitely was their best move to check here and my best move to take back, their best move to trade, and of course my only move to, you know, to double my pawns. But now they should have gotten this bishop up or this bishop here. The only thing that both of those do besides develop pieces is, let's see, they get bishops in front of the king. They both do that. And they both, you know, work to get out of the way of rooks. Their king has moved so it can't castle, but, you know, it could probably move and let this rook out. So those are their two best moves. But they played f4 instead. And apparently I had multiple moves that took advantage of that, but this was the best one because they can't save the rook. Okay, so it was both. During the game, I said I didn't know where the bot went wrong, whether it was setting up the queen and the knight or whether it was something later, like around here, but it was both. Putting the knight in there was the mistake that gave me a little bit of an advantage. I didn't properly take advantage of it. But then that was a further mistake, but I didn't take advantage of it. And it took all the way out until here when f4 was played, it gave it away for good. Okay. Well, good for me, because there was no way they could have saved the rook at this point. And it looks like neither one of us made any more mistakes or blunders, although there were a couple of inaccuracies, three inaccuracies just bundled together here. So I'm curious about that. Here on move 30, I have a mate in 16 if they play their best move. And they did play their best move. Wait, what? So this isn't an inaccuracy if it's the best move. That's, I was about to say that's the definition of inaccuracy, but it's the opposite of the de definition of inaccuracy. By, by definition, an inaccuracy cannot be the best move. And here it's both. So there's a problem, but they played their best move, not an inaccuracy. And I played my best move. Also not inaccurate if it's the best move. My best move was to go for that pawn, and that's what I played, so not inaccurate. Now here it says their best move was to push this pawn. I'm not sure why. 
So was king to b4 actually inaccurate? Let's see. Mate in 13, mate in 12. How bad did this set him back? Mate in 11? That's not much worse than mate in 13 or mate in 12. I wouldn't classify that as inaccurate either. Oh, and I should have played this pawn. Oh, I see. I was leaving that pawn there because of the of the rook, but I... Okay, the bishop's defending the rook. If I play this pawn now and they come toward the rook, I just keep pushing that pawn and the bishop is still defending the rook. And this pawn would have gotten there a lot more quickly than the h pawn, so definitely d5 would have been better here, but king to g6 was my second best move. That was okay, and again, d5. d5 is still faster than the way that I went. I was going here to clear a path for these two pawns. I don't know why my h pawn did not want to go straight forward, but... So, as it turns out, those two inaccuracies were not actually inaccurate. In both cases, it was our best move. Is it still listed as the best move? Yes, king to b5 is still the best move. Oh, but now king to g7 is not listed as best move. It was a second ago, but now it's not. Made in 14, this takes us to made in 13. Okay, so it was among several best moves that were all the same. So yeah, definitely best move. Well, that solves that problem and answered my question here in this little section. Well, this means I have to go on to the next one. I don't know when I'll do that, but I'm going to try to play level 12, which I think is rated 1600 at some point in the future. Thank you for spending your time here. I'll see you next time.